Hello and welcome to Body Meets Mind, Philosophies and Strategies for an Elevated Life. My name is Paulie and here by my very side is a young man by the name of Tom Ahern. How are you, sir? Mate, I'm good. Virtually, I am uh, by your side. Physically, I wish I was, uh, but sadly, I'm not. Um, but uh, with good internet connection, we uh, we can bring those two together and act as if it were true. 100%. But the, a very, very balanced uh, screen we have right here. Speaking of balance. <laughs> oh, that was good. I like that. Speaking of screen. <laughs> Speaking of screen and balance. We are going to be discussing uh, tools for achieving a balanced life. And we're going to speak from personal experience. And also I'm going to dive into a few different uh, forms of inspiration that have come across my eyes as well. So, um Balance is an interesting one, Tom. You know, uh, yeah. a lot of people don't even believe in balance. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I personally think it's important to frame what balance is and how you define it. And, you know, I, I've thought about this often and regularly. Balance can be uh, something that you can look at from uh, throughout a day. It can be something that you look at throughout a week or throughout an entire life's journey. What do I mean by that? Well, often, you know, you can uh, choose to really, really focus on certain things throughout different seasons in life. And I've, I've definitely yeah. noticed this, uh, where, you know, for, for me, for example, um, you know, I'm, I'm deep in uh, childhood uh, raising, et cetera. So, so like, you know, parenthood is, is definitely the season of my life. But um, I think it's important to be cognizant and aware of that and then to be able to take a step back and say, how is this going to look in the context of even the decade that I'm living in? How am I going to be able to balance my decade out? Have you ever thought about that you can balance uh, your life out in such a way? Yeah, I mean, certainly not to, um, uh, you know, the length of, say, 10 years. I mean, I, I think about what some of my constants are in life. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you know, um, you know, being writing and, 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 and exercise are probably just the two things that haven't really changed, but, uh, I mean, you're exactly right about, I mean, see, I, the trouble is, is that I think people, um, see balance is, um, um, as kind of like a static means to ends, you know, it's how do I find my balance? You know, we perceive that in the same light as I've lost my glasses. Yeah. When I find my glasses again, I'll no longer need to think about my glasses. Mm. And balance is a dynamic force, you know, and, and it's the same thing as um, how do I find fulfillment? You never find it. You you put a set of intentional practices into your life or, or, or values that you stand by that 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 allow fulfillment to ensue as you age. And balance is very much like that. And to, to use, um, to you know, to use your point, you know, it comes in seasons, you know, that the expression, um, everything in moderation, including moderation is mm. very pertinent here because right now, you know, being a father, being heavily in the fatherhood stage of your life, um, not that that will ever change, um, but because you could just so dependent on you right now, um, your balance is, 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 you know, it's to what context it's like, well, fatherhood is priority you know, absolutely number one right now to yeah. the potential detriment of other things. Um, but that's fine. And I think what, and tell, tell me if you think this is true. When people say, how do I find my balance? Um, in my opinion, most, more often than not, they're coming from a place of I'm doing too much as opposed to I'm not doing enough. So that's one. Mm -hmm. And then also how do I find my balance is how do I find a way to, emotionally regulate, self-soothe and find a way to move with the tides of my life is kind of what I get from that question. Yeah, I, I love that. And I think that's a really, really uh, an aware kind of statement because so many people do move through uh, lives either without that sense of awareness, but also um, using their past existence as a reference point for what balance should look like which isn't necessarily the case, you know, priorities and circumstances in your life will change that raise priorities to the surface. Mm. So once again, brings up that 
that element of self-awareness. It's like checking in with yourself and saying, what does not just balance look like to me this year or today, but at, at this very moment, what does balance look like? You know? Yes. yes. A- and sometimes it's just being able to kind of acknowledge something. And, uh, you know, with that acknowledgement can, can, can create a little bit of a, a, a valve release later on in the day or, or, or in the week or whatever it might, might be. Yes. Yeah. I really, I, I really agree with that. You know, so much of this is about self-awareness and being able to check in, um, to, to really figure out what your needs are, you know, and so much of life, um, that, that's thrown at us is relatively uncontrollable, you know, and you, you, we, we've all, we've all got jobs and we, you know, we can all, we can all be busy. In other words, we can use our busyness as a means not to get the things done that we really want to get done that move the needle forwards. So I think in that regard, it's really important to not necessarily make practical and tangible goals that are 10 years away because so much changes in three months, but just have a think about, the kind of lifestyle that you you ultimately want. And there's a metric that I always use to measure my level of fulfillment, not necessarily success by is, um, you know, if, if I would my life change or be better in any way, if I had all the money in the world mm. and uh, I, you know, to some degree it would a little bit, cause I'd probably be a little bit more materialistic. <laughs> um, nothing too drastic. I'd probably buy, I'd be, I'd be a little bit, um, uh, a little bit crazy at a bookstore and, you know, perhaps I'd get like a new, I don't know, whatever it is, a wardrobe or wow. whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'd, I'd probably buy a dinosaur, um, <laughs> <laughs> a live dinosaur, um, you know, nothing too drastic, <laughs> but, yeah. but for the most part, you know, how you spend your time um, is really what you should consider in terms of how far away you are from, you know, fulfillment, um, from balance. Um, and then, and then even beyond that, there's something that you can think about is in the beginning, it's all about balance. How do I find my balance? And then when you find what it is that you want to do, it's as long as you get that done, life can kind of throw whatever it needs to at you. And that doesn't really matter. Yeah. 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 I, I think part of, you know, like, like this, this whole balance conversation is, just being really, really comfortable being out of balance. In a right. Very, you know, like I, I know it's kind of a, um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's um, it's a paradox. It's a paradox. Yeah. It's a, mm. it, it's, it's a bit of a paradox being thrown at you, but like knowing with the, that, that self-awareness and self-assuredness that um, you'll be able to uh, kind of address the, the other side of things uh, eventually is, is, something that, that gives you a great sense of, um, you know, kind of acknowledgement and uh, pride in the, the path that you're taking. Now, balance can uh, really be fulfilled in uh, various different ways. I'm going to take it in much more, a little bit more of a literal way, okay? So um, I'm going to go, you know, we, we've kind of gone more, like a little bit more etheric and, or should I say, um, you know, kind of lifestyle. Yep, while- yep. <clears throat> And that path until we get a little bit more literal of it. Um, you know, we can look at balancing to what addresses and fulfills our day. You know, are we um, giving to those around us? Are we giving to ourselves in the way of uh, physical uh, physical pursuits in terms of exercise and training? And um, uh, are we, you know, eating a balanced uh, diet, you know, a lot of people are very much in the uh, the realm, and I feel like this is kind of, you know, it's it's not to say this is right or wrong, but a lot of people do go extreme when it comes to various different yes. uh, um, modalities in, in life, like you know, veganism uh, versus uh, you know, carnivores. Yeah, yeah, and, and and there is a, a balanced kind of way to be able to achieve everything so um and, and then you've also got like the the physical expression of what balance looks like literally are you a balanced human being is, right. is your left and right side balanced is your bottom half and your top half balanced you know don't miss like that kids <laughs> do you wear new balance shoes <laughs> do you wear new balance shoes <laughs> Well, that's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think having a, a balanced kind of uh, exercise regime 
has an impact on the, you know, kind of, this might be a little bit of a, a stretch here, but like having a balanced exercise regime, I know for me has an impact on my mentality. So oh, yeah. if I'm just lifting heavy shit constantly, yep. I get very wound up, right? Yes. Like I get tight. And if I don't have a release, that balance in the physical realm, then my mental capacity actually really struggles. Yes, ab absolutely. Well, you know, it's funny, you know, some of the research out there about um, intelligence is that as you age, the only thing that seems to stave off um, the decrease in cognitive ability is resistance training, which is mm. very interesting. Um, mm. And there's, there's a research body behind that. But what I what I tend to view the world through is that is, is always a lens of polarity. I'm always looking at, you know, order and chaos, uh, left and right, mm -hmm. um, rigidity and overwhelm, um, and and feeling into where um, not only I am on those spectrums, but even where my clients are. You know, you can always kind of gauge what people need based mm -hmm. upon where they are in the trenches and also what their, their conceptualization of the greener grass is, you know? Yeah. And when people say, I just want more balance, um, it's kind of, I want more time to do the things that I love to do. That's what mostly I hear from that. And obviously everyone has their own, um, their own experience and so forth. But, um, you know, even what, even the point you made just then about exercise, you know, lifting too many heavy weights and then needing to release on the other side of, you know, life, do you know what's really interesting about polarity, no matter what it is, yin and yang, black and white, um, left and right, pain and pleasure, when it comes even to the human animal, that's how our neurochemistry regulates itself through mm -hmm. the process of, as we know, of homeostasis. So yeah. I even think that, you know, and, and this, this is bordering on the esoteric, but the Eastern traditions view God as the one, you know, two sides coming together of the same coin. Um, it's all just that dualistic thing coming into the one. But but in terms of finding your balance, this is also absolutely true. If you can, what, what, you, what you'll be able to do is not necessarily asking yourself, how do I find balance? But feeling into where you are on the, spec, on the spectrum of too much shit to do and not enough shit to do and then constantly playing and dancing on that spectrum. Yeah, and you, you raise a good point about too much shit to do and not enough shit to do because how many times have you found yourself being in the presence of people who are stressed out yep. because if they're business owners, for example, or if they're, um, I don't know, relief teachers, um, and they're stressed out because they don't have enough work. Right. You speak to them one week and they're like, oh, I'm just you know, I don't know, business struggling. And, and then you speak to them a fortnight later and they're so stressed out because they've got too much work. I just can't fit anything else into my life. It's like, at what point in their lives are they actually going to be looking at um, a constructive kind of yes. process behind what, what what the world has given them? Yeah. Yes. So it's like, okay, you could look at it like this or uh, there's not enough work right now either a you can do things to be able to you know kind of build that up or b you can actually do other shit like for yourself to create balance in your life you can go for a nice long walk in the park you can take a half day on a friday and take the family for a long weekend perhaps you know there are opportunities in everything as opposed to just restrictions yeah i love that man and and one thing i've been noticing that's coming up as well is this this uh, modern conflation of self care with self indulgence, and I believe that um, you know um, people cop a lot when they talk about loving who you are, feeling enough, um, accepting yourself as you are, um, you know, doing less, you know, mm -hmm. chilling out, having the half half, half Friday off, you know. Um, but self care is different to self indulgence. You know, mm -hmm. self care and doing things to meet your own needs is not eating too much food watching too many movies and just being a lazy slob, you know, mm -hmm. self-care is, as you said, spending time with the family, going for a walk, doing a yoga class. These are less intensive, less stressful things that are still good for you. You know, that's the, that's the main point. 
self-care is what's good for you. And, and maybe you could argue, and I've definitely argued this to myself <laughs> many times that, you know, having a pizza tonight is, is, is really what I need, you know, but that's the 20%. That's the 20%. That's the stuff that, um, you know, the self-indulgence aspect is, it is necessary every once in a while because you've got to enjoy life, but it's different than self-care. 100%. And it feels good for you as you're doing it, right? Well, that's the thing. It feels really good for you as you're doing it. And, and this kind of raises the whole conversation about short-term gratification versus that long-term um, that long-term win. Eating a pizza and smearing it all over your face. <laughs> well, I forgot, I forgot to mention that part, yes. <laughs> I mean, that's, come on, mate. Like, that's the deal. While I'm wearing <laughs> New Balance shoes. <laughs> what else you're wearing? <laughs> smearing, uh, smearing the pizza on my New Balance shoes. <laughs> Oh, mate, that's it. Um, you know, it, it's it's that short-term versus long-term. But um, I, I find that I can get really, really hyper-focused on, for example, a, a physical expression. If I'm getting, like, I, I got deep into uh, Olympic weightlifting um, back in the day, and I loved it so much. I was just so completely obsessed with it. But my body really, yeah. really tightened up and um you know my symptoms came out uh, heavily as a result of it and after a while i realized that um you know something needed to change so what did i do i went straight from olympic lifting three hours a day to doing nothing but yoga mm. and eventually what i what i realized was there was polarities there that i expressed in my own uh in my own uh, physical expression um but then i realized you can actually do all of it yes. within a, a week if it, it depends how you, you frame your week but if i'm just using a physical expression like for example i can do strength training and then go stretch in the sauna for a half an hour i can do a you know a, an intensive cardio session or a Brazilian jiu-jitsu session where I can kind of express myself through play and rolling yep. and get it all, you know? Yep. It's not a – I mean, it, it depends what your, your objective is. We're not professional sportsmen, so we don't need to express ourselves through hyper-specialisation, yes. you know? We – I mean, they're lucky in a way where they get to perform at the highest level, but they're also very restricted where everything that they need to do or everything that they do needs to be specialised. We have the freedom yeah. to be able to express ourselves, not just in sport and, and exercise, but in, you know, being able to um, get our thoughts out on a piece of paper through a journal. And if that doesn't work uh, on a particular occasion, we can do breath work. And if that yeah. doesn't work, we can speak to a friend or our loved ones. Uh, you know, there are so many different options that we can do, but it's mm -hmm. about ultimately coming back to what is it that I need right now and let me then get to my toolkit that is ever expanding and see what, what feels right at this particular occasion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think, you know, one of the difficulties about being human is that we need to... Um, figure out what's good for us today that will also be good for our future self, you know, and we need to kind of find this place of, because, you know, as we've mentioned again, you know, the, the polarity here is what's good for me today and what's good for me in the future. Um, and, and one way that I've tried to think about it is focus on enjoying the life that you're building, which to mm -hmm. me kind of brings the two together. So, when you're when you've got this mentality that you're building a lifestyle, there is going to be some delayed gratification that needs to take place there mm -hmm. because you can't just stand at the top of the skyscraper today. You know you're you're building it, but then if you're only ever building a life, you're also going to need to stop and smell the roses every once in a while because mm -hmm. if it's a life that you're building, if that's your axiom, then you're never going to reach the destination either. So yes. when you view it through that lens, it's kind of like you can find a really happy medium there. You're you're never you're never going to reach what you're ultimately trying to get to. So don't work all the time because this is what you're doing. But then at the same time, if you don't work at all, you'll never amount to anything. Hmm. So it's a, it's a really interesting kind of question and dichotomy that you you raise because to me, like. The, the natural question there is is how do you know when to 
wake up and smell the roses and how how do you know when to delay gratification well i i mean i have tried to simplify my life as much as possible to figure out what it is that i'm willing to delay gratification for mm -hmm. um you know what am i really trying to build here um and you know it's 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 for me that's that's creativity and i've certainly working with creatives in the past whether you're a painter or a sculptor or a speaker or a writer or a composer dancer whatever it is um the thing that is just yours that you know to your point that allows you to express yourself is a thing that you want to cultivate um because it becomes your reason to be almost in a way you know and then everything else um you, you know you can uh, and then everything else uh weaves into that thing that you're trying to build so you might think of it like this okay someone says oh um you know i'm just i'm heavily addicted to drugs and uh and i just can't get off them you know and then a top a top down approach says um well let, let's let's work on some strategies to to help you with that habit the bottom up approach says it's no wonder you're addicted to drugs because drugs are really fun and they work on the dopamine system and they're going to make you feel good what you need is something that's even more fun that's healthier and more sustainable mm -hmm. and that's a different way to think about it because then you yeah. might say okay well drugs give me that peak and then that drop yeah but what gives me a sustained level of feeling good over time and more mm -hmm. often than not it's flow states it's it's progress it's building on something mm -hmm. you know so so then you've got to kind of think okay well i can't do everything because i'm gonna die and i'm i'm scarce on time so maybe i only need to pick a couple of things and then people end up doing this anyway you know yeah. intuitively without even thinking about it people become you know more, more often, and there's a lot of freedom in this day and age which is really good but i'd say on the, on the majority of people do one job um so that's one thing they're building they're also a part of a family. So that's another thing they're building. And then they might have some either hobby or exercise. So it's usually within that three to five thing. And, mm -hmm. and I, what I find is that if people can fill their cups along those different things every day, um, well then whatever life gives them, they can give them, they might enjoy pizza and so forth. But if you, you know, do you know what I mean? I do completely. And I can use an example of, um, What's filled my cup uh, creatively, um, which I've just brought back into the fold, which is uh, ceramics and pottery. And mm, uh, mm. I've just uh, gotten back on the wheel as of, I'm actually on there again tonight, which is very exciting. Nice. Is that uh, the actual expression? Get back on the wheel? Get back on the whel. <laughs> cool. Ladies wheel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is pottery jargon 101. <laughs> Paul will be wearing New Balance shoes. <laughs> well, I, I actually have never heard it outside of me saying it. So, <laughs> Okay. We are uh, point a very, very, uh, you know, uh, amazing phrase for the future, or maybe I'm just, you yeah. know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> maybe it's like all these potters are going, what a loser. Yeah. <laughs> Calls himself a ceramic. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, it's, it's very exciting, and you get to create. I mean, you know, people get to create things and we're kind of going off, off off topic a little bit here, but probably we can find a way to relate it. We'll bring it back. You know, you create words, you construct sentences and paragraphs and books, which is like such an incredible gift that you have to be able to put into what it is that you do. I love creating shit with my hands. Mm. Like, um, you know, like literally having a lump of clay and turning it into something that is an expression of my own creativity mm. fully with you know music which is something that we both share as well yeah. to be able to do that also like to be able to create something i think is one of one of the greatest gifts um you know humans have been given so yes and and there's a lovely way that we can bring this back into balance is people you might say oh, i really want to find my balance and then another question you should ask yourself is why yeah when you have your balance what are you going to do with it and then the next question, well, that becomes around how you're going to spend your time, isn't it? And creativity for you and I is absolutely what we love doing, you know, beyond, I mean, sorry, excuse me, as well as family and health and wellness and so forth. Yeah. Why is the greatest and most difficult question to answer often with anything in life? Because it promotes self-reflection. 
why. And that that's hard to reflect and think about who you are beyond the social constructs and childhood programming and, 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 and everything. But it's the best question to ask yourself because it liberates you from all of that stuff and it helps you find your own path. It really does because when you look at it from a purely rational perspective, you're like, why are you wasting your time on a wheel, you know, right. uh, creation? Why are you wasting your time just writing? Um, because if you look at it purely uh, from time allocation versus trying to get stuff done, whatever yep. your primary outcome is, let's say you're trying to build a business, I'll try to build a business, whatever it might be. It's like, why would you be throwing clay down and uh, or writing songs? Yeah. Um, because the, the answer is not, it's not it's not a linear path it's not a plus b equals c right it, like you're opening your mind up and your perspective on life to be able to appreciate things in a completely different light hence giving you a different perspective on your work on your business and creating a much bigger growth opportunity when you do this and as a result of that mm. the time that you've taken out to be able to be expressive creatively gives you a completely different perspective on business and can give you that little extra edge that you may not have had previously. Yes, absolutely. I mean, so that, that is a good way to kind of, you know, leave it for people to think about, you know, if you're, if you're out there and you're someone who, who wants to create more balance in your life, um, ask yourself what for and, and really think about the cups that you're trying to fill um, not only today, but six months down the line, a year down the line, you know, even think about who you want to be, um, you know, because, because creating balance so that you can live a life, you know, there's a, there's a wonderful, um, there's a wonderful idea that Nietzsche put forward, um, in one of his books <clears throat> and, um, you know, so many existentialists out there think come up with different, um, uh, ways to, to help people figure out what what they should do with their lives or how to find their purpose and their meaning mm. and so forth. And Nietzsche said, um, I'll, I'll paraphrase it, but Nietzsche said something like, if you had to live this day over and over again for the rest of your life, would I, would I have just allowed you into hell or will I, or would I have permitted you to heaven? Uh, to, to, yeah, to help. Would it be a hell or a heaven? Um, mm. And I really love that because, because life is essentially this, this constant moment to moment thing we're always just in this time right now the past and the future are both illusory um if you can optimize for feeling good and worthwhile in this moment that can last and keep you going in the future um bearing in mind that we have responsibilities and bills to pay and, and, and everything like that um what kind of day would you construct what yeah. day what would that day look like you know because groundhog day it's a great movie but I think um, the one of the central points about it is that he hates that day. And then over and over and over, he slowly molds it until it's a great day. And it's only when it becomes a really great day, paradoxically, is he not allowed to live it anymore. And that's kind of like us. When it becomes an amazing day, if we're living intentionally, that's when we die. <laughs> 100%. Well, we'll leave that there because that was a, a lovely little um, way to think about uh, the life of balance and a day of balance. So if you guys have any thoughts about how uh, balance looks like to you, we'd love to hear about it. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying our uh, discussions. And if you have any thoughts um, about what you would like to hear more of, please just let us know. If you wanted to get some uh, New Balance shoes, just use the podcast checkout code. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding we're not affiliated with new balance <laughs> yet yes <laughs> thanks paulie talk to you soon dude thanks Tommy.